The government has today administered the economy an unprecedented $12.1 billion shot to help those hit hard by the COVID-19 epidemic. In what it calls the largest peacetime economic plan in New Zealand's modern history, the package is more than all of this government's new operating spending across three budgets combined. It includes wage subsidies of $5.1 billion, which for employers means $585 a week for full-time staff and $350 a week for part-time staff, capped at 150000 per business. And there's also $126 million set aside for a self-isolation support package. There'll also be a bump for benefits. There's $500 million set aside for health too. Checkpoint will be staying on air until 7 o'clock tonight for analysis of today's announcement. After six, we'll be joined by Westpac Chief Economist Dominic Stevens, First Union's Tali Williams and business consultant Phil O'Reilly. We'll also hear throughout the programme from businesses and employees across New Zealand. But first, let's speak to the Finance Minister, Grant Robertson, who joins us now live from our gallery studio. Good evening, Minister. How many jobs do you think this will save? Oh, look, I hope it saves plenty. The reality, though, is that none of us can actually answer that question at this stage. What the, particularly the wage subsidy package is about is giving employers time to readjust to the new normal that we're in, uh, to make sure that they can um, keep staff in place. But the answer directly to that question is just not one that anyone can give. We do know that New Zealanders will lose their jobs as a result of this coronavirus situation. What we have tried to do to day is cushion the blow of that. What are the experts telling you about how many job losses to expect? Look, again, the advice that we've had is that the impact of this overall coronavirus will be worse than the global financial crisis. In the global financial crisis, unemployment reached around 6.7%. We're at 4% at the moment, so you can start to do the maths there. But I'm loath to give a number when I simply don't have that information. So best case scenario, you really just, and you've used these words, to looking to cushion the blow, aren't you? Not prevent it. Indeed, indeed and, and I got to be straight up with New Zealanders here, every sector of the economy is going to be affected by this. Because we don't know how long the impacts of the virus are going to last, it's very difficult to say exactly what that impact will be. But what we're saying to New Zealanders today is that we are here, and it's not just the wage subsidy, Lisa, it's also the tax changes we've made, it's also the changes to benefits in the winter energy payment and so on. So we've got a package here, and it's not the end of the road in terms of government support either. We have the budget coming, um, which I have said will be a recovery budget, and I also reserve the right to be able to do more things between now and then as they're needed. Do you anticipate you will have to do something before the budget? Um, there may be some instances where we do need to. Um, you know, We know that there are some large and complex businesses in New Zealand where oh, clearly our wage subsidy scheme is not going to be able to help them. They will be in conversations with their banks as we speak. We in turn are in conversation with the banks as well. What kind um, of businesses are you w- talking about, Minister? Oh, well, you know, there are large, you know, when you've got a $150,000 cap, clearly for, you know, businesses with a large number of employees, um, that is not going to be enough for them. Um, We want to be able to work alongside those. Their first port of call will be their bank, obviously, um, but this is going to affect every part of the economy. Looking at that isolation fund, I was interested in the detail there. So it's based on 27,000 workers being in isolation for every two-week cycle for eight weeks. You're talking about 100 100,000 plus workers. Is that the worst case scenario? Potentially, yes. I mean, as in all of these um, schemes, what we've set out here to do is set some criteria and then we have to ask officials who have been working round the clock over the last couple of weeks to come up with an estimate of the number of people. It would be fair to say that those estimates have had to be fairly rough and ready. The point here is the criteria of the scheme is clear. If people meet it, then the money will be paid out. But the 100,000 plus workers potentially going into isolation is the middle ground, isn't it? Because you have said in that document it could go higher. Well, exactly. And the point is we don't know exactly. What we're saying is here is the criteria for a scheme. And I guess what really has concerned us here is that there are a group of workers for whom they won't be able um, to necessarily self-isolate easily, particularly for economic um, terms. You know, some people who may be asked to self-isolate, they might think, well, you know, can I actually do that? Can I afford that? It's those people for whom the scheme is aimed at. Okay, so the the wage uh, subsidy package, where does that lead? 
Reeve say, uh, as a real example, a taxi driver who spends seven hours at the airport in a single day waiting for one fare, is he or she covered? Yes. And so they would just make an, an application, what, as a sole trader? Absolutely. Or? Absolutely. Sole traders and self-employed are covered. And in fact, the very people we're worried about here in many cases are those people. You know, the vast majority of New Zealand businesses, the only employee is the sole trader. And so we, are, we have organised both the wage subsidy scheme and the provisions around self-isolation to include them. So where is this $12.1 billion coming from? Is any of it repurposed? Is it all new and borrowed? all new and yes we have issued government bonds today in order to be able to do that that's exactly what we always do it's the normal debt instrument and what are you anticipating in terms of your debt level how high could they go how high could they go? <laughs> yeah look it's very you know i said today we will definitely go beyond the 15 to 25 percent target that we have um, we always said in our budget responsibility rules that they had were caveated by whether there was a global shock global economic shock that is clearly what is happening now. So what are you comfortable with, though? So good, during the global financial crisis, it was up around the, the 30 um, mark. So what would you be comfortable with? Going that high, going higher? Look, you know, I'm not really in a position again because of the uncertain times that we're in to give a specific answer. But what I said today is it is my full expectation we will go above that 25%. So what happens in 12 weeks' time? Because that's the package duration, isn't it? How long for you the expect? wage subsidy, yeah. yes it is. Um, look, we, all constant, we are constantly reviewing this on a day-by-day -day basis and I think you and the listeners will understand that things have moved very fast and they will continue to move relatively fast. The 12 weeks means we've given certainty. We'll continue to look at, uh, at what we is, is possible and what is needed as we go. But what are you being told about how long this potentially will last? Well, I'm being told the same thing that everybody else is, which is it is very, very uncertain. You know, clearly, you know, the, the arc of things that we've seen overseas is New Zealand will have more cases. That is inevitable. The work that we're doing in terms of, of the border restrictions, in terms of our public health campaigns, is, as I'm sure you've heard, about mm. smoothing the curve. Um, that means if we do that, the impact may be less and last for a little less long than it would if it was a spike. But those are public health matters. What I have done today is announced a package to cushion the blow, to allow businesses to readjust and work with their employees. But there are going to be some tough times ahead, Lisa. So initially you were saying short, sharp shock, six months, <laughs> right? So did you underestimate this? No, I don't. I was working on the advice that everybody around the world was. And I was very clear at the time, the reason why I outlined three scenarios was because if containment didn't work, we were going to move rapidly through the second and third scenarios. What we've so seen where right are we now, Minister? In terms of your scenarios, in, what are you working on? We're in the third scenario, Lisa, because right around Global the world... Global recession. We're, we're in the third scenario because right around the world, countries are literally shutting down. If you go into Europe now, people are being told to stay home where there are large community outbreaks. We are fortunate we do not have one of those at the moment. That's why we've taken the drastic decisions we have around things like border restrictions so that we can do our best not to have that community outbreak. But in terms of the global economy, you don't have whole countries shut down and not have that significant downturn. And I know finance ministers in particular do not like these words, but can you be clear with me? Are you working on a scenario of a global recession or are you talking about a depression? Oh, at the moment we're look, working on the scenario of a global recession. Um, are again, you working on a fourth scenario though? <laughs> look, at this stage we're working on the package we got out today. We managed to put that out inside a week. Um, we continue to monitor things constantly and as I said the budget is really the next phase of substantially of our recovery package. What's going to happen with Air New Zealand? You're, you're the shareholding minister, what do you anticipate will need to happen there? So as Air New Zealand has publicly stated, they are in conversations with the government. I am the shareholding minister and unfortunately I'm not able to go into that for legal reasons. So dividend? Are you likely well, they've to wave? already They've already said that they wouldn't be issuing dividends. OK, so what does this all mean for your budget? Does the government's priorities still remain the same? Like, you know, eradicating child poverty, building houses. Where does this put you big picture? Yeah, look, that's exactly the, the process we're now going through. Obviously, when you're putting a budget together, we'd reached the point where we had made a number of firm decisions. I've now asked ministers to go back and look at all of them to make sure that we have a budget that is aligned to the recovery um, around COVID-19. But quite clearly, making sure we lift children out of poverty 
making sure that we build houses, making sure that we look after our families. Those are important things in any time and we will continue to pursue though those objectives because actually they're part of helping New Zealand recover. Okay, so the 500 million that is earmarked to go into health resources, how is that going to be distributed? And who makes so, those decisions? So, well, obviously the Ministry of Health, working alongside district health boards and working alongside regional public health and working alongside GPs. There's an awful lot of detail, uh, Lisa, in that package that's been released today. The big focus, obviously, is on making sure that we do the core things that are needed at the moment. So that's, that's the testing, that's the tracing, that's the public health campaigns, that's the support for public health staff for Healthline, that's the support for DHB staff. What about All medication? All of that's there and ready to go. What about medication? Because um, obviously there are advances, people are working on this. Does this money, is part of this money set aside in case there is some kind of medicine that could be used in the fight against this? That'll come further down the track and what I've said to the Minister of Health and I've said it on, on Radio New Zealand very early on is we will do what it takes when it comes to health care. Um, those issues around vaccines and medicines are some way down the track. Just before you go, we are being told, well, maybe we'd like to take a holiday in New Zealand. The economy could, could use a boost. School holidays come around. Do you want us travelling the length and breadth of New Zealand or not? Yeah, look, I mean, we do want people to spend money in the New Zealand economy. Where we are right now, everyone will be aware of the rules around mass gatherings and the rules around social distancing. People should be able to, you know, do things like go on holiday. But obviously this is a day-by-day -day situation and we certainly want people to keep spending. Buy local would be my best advice today, Lisa.